Hi, I'm Scott Berry, I'm Broker Associate with Janet Berry's Luxury Home Team at Premier Plus Realty in beautiful Naples, Florida. I'm here to, today to talk about one of the questions we hear most often. As I was putting together this video about home inspections, I decided it was too long and perhaps too detailed. So I'm splitting this video up into two sections. First of all, I will be going over a very high level summary of the process for home inspections according to the contract. And then following that will be uh, the very detailed information that I'm going to go through in the second half of the video. After my summary, which may be enough information for most folks, just stick around inside this video and I'm going to go over the details if you want to learn all the details of what your rights are with home inspections and the entire detailed process that's involved. Either way, when you're working with us, we'll be guiding you through everything and protecting you throughout uh, the entire process anyway. So let's talk about um, summary again of home inspections. So you found the perfect property and um, you're wondering what, to, what kind of inspections you can do on the property to make sure that everything is okay. Uh, first of all, there are several types of properties, regardless of which contract you're using in Florida, there are several types of inspections that you can have done to a property. First of all are these systems and equipment inspections, and that's what people normally think of when they hear home inspection. And that's just checking everything, the air conditioning, the appliances, uh, the roof, everything to make sure that it is functioning, that everything is functioning the way it was designed to function. And if it's not, we'll talk about it from there, but that's kind of the home inspection that you normally hear about. You also have a couple other types of inspections you can do. You can inspect for radon gas, um, just to make sure that um, the radon does not exceed the EPA action levels, which are uh, four picocuries per liters of air. Um, radon has been found in properties in the state of Florida, just like it has throughout the United States. You can also have an inspection done for lead-based paint or lead-based paint hazards if the property was built in the 70s or earlier. Um, you can have a termite inspection or inspection for other wood destroying organisms. You can have an air inspection done, um, which is where you're looking for the presence of toxic and pathogenic molds. And also the the last type of inspection that the contract allows you to do is inspecting for the existence of any open open building permits and normally the closing attorney or the closing company that is um, going to be doing the actual closing on your property is going to do those types of inspections because they're going to be sending out estoppels and make sure there are no liens on the property etc so let's go through the the uh, high level summary here i just put together a really quick flowchart to illustrate. Um, first of all, the very first choice you have to make is you have to decide if you want to have inspections done on the property. We always highly recommend that you do, at a minimum, um, that you do the systems and equipment inspection. The normally, the normal home inspection, quote unquote, that you usually hear. Um, just to make sure that everything is working the way it's supposed to work. So if the answer to that is no, then um, you shall be deemed to have accepted the property in the condition that it was on the effective date, the date that you signed the contract. If the answer is yes, and you do want to have inspections performed, um, we will go through with you in the contract the inspections that I just talked about to see which ones you want to have done. Um, those inspections can be done by an appropriately licensed Florida inspector, inspection company, or Anybody who's a licensed contractor who has a license to repair and maintain the items that you're having inspected. So you're going to have the inspection done. You have 15 days as standard in the contract. That is a negotiable item. Um, when you write it up, you have an inspection period of 15 days to have these inspections conducted. Are there any defective items? If the answer to that is no, again, you've accepted the property the way it was in the condition that it was on the effective date. If we do find defective items, and again, we're going to go over these in great detail <laughs> um, in the second half of this video, we're going to talk about what actually makes uh, a defect. Um, so if there are defects, you have to determine if you want to make any elections to the seller 
you have a couple different options with the seller. First of all, if you don't want to make any elections to the seller, again, the flowchart just goes back up and says you're accepting the property the way it was when you signed the contract. So the options that you have with the seller, you can either ask them to perform remedial action. They have to uh, repair the item or replace the item if it's not working the way it was designed to work. Uh, the second option is the seller can provide a credit at closing in lieu of any repairs. And the third option is a combination of the, the two options. So you can have them fix certain items and provide credits for other items as well. So um, after the 15 day period, you do have another five day, which is your election period after the end of the inspection period to determine what you want the seller to do. So at that point, we're gonna provide a list of all the items that are not working as they're supposed to work or any defective items. We're gonna send that list to the seller um, along with your election form telling the seller exactly what you want them to do, to fix or to provide credits for. Um, if the seller accepts all the elections, um, all the items that you want corrected, great. Then they have a uh, time frame to correct those prior to closing. If the answer is no, if the seller either rejects your elections or if they counter any of your elections, then you have an option, if we're using the Naples Area Board of Realtors contract, you have an option um, to within the next five days to terminate the contract if you want to. So do you want to terminate the contract? Yes, you terminate the contract and everybody moves on. And um, if the answer is no, again, you're accepting the property the way it was on the effective date. So if the seller is going to perform remedial action, um, we're going to check to make sure those items have been corrected. I always recommend that you have the same inspector out that did the original inspection and let them determine if the defect has been cured or corrected. Has the remedial action been performed satisfactorily? If the answer is yes, you're ready to close and that element is, is closed. Sounds pretty simple. If the answer to that is no, then obviously the seller has to go back and, and correct those items. And there are additional remedies as well if, if they're not performed correctly the first time. There are other options you know, where we can hold money back in escrow or things like that so that we don't affect closing date. But at a very high level, um, that is the summary of home inspection. Before we move on to the detailed section of the video, if you have any questions about the home inspections or anything to do with Southwest Florida real estate, you can always text or call Janet at 239-450-1892, or you can shoot her an email at Janet at JanetBerry.com, or you can contact myself, Scott, at 239-450-0290. You can text me or call me or you can send an email to scott at janetberry.com. Are you thinking of buying or selling a home in Southwest Florida? Contact Janet Berry, who is an expert throughout Naples, Bonita Springs, Estero, and Marco Island. With over 30 years combined experience in Southwest Florida, the Janet Berry Luxury Home Team is associated with Premier Plus Realty, who is ranked number one in transactions and averaging over $1.5 billion in annual sales. Janet Berry's experience to work for you today. Don't forget to bring Janet with you to any new home communities to ensure she can represent you and protect you in your purchase. Call Janet Berry today at 239-450-1892. Here we are in the detailed section of this video regarding home inspections. For the purposes of this video, we are going to be looking at the Naples Area Board of Realtors contract, which we call the neighbor contract. And more than likely, if you're purchasing or selling a property in Naples, you will be using the neighbor contract. 
If you're purchasing it in a different area, um, you may be using the Florida Association of Realtors Fire Bar contract. I'm happy to answer any questions that you have on either contract, but we are going to be running through the standards that are contained in the uh, Naples Area Board of Realtors contract for the purposes of this video. As we talked about in the summary, the on the Naples Area Board of Realtors contract, it does default to 15 days for the inspection period, and that starts counting from the effective date, which is the date that the that everybody has signed the contract. So during the inspection period, um, you have the right to conduct, according to the contract, these six types of inspections. The first one is the systems and equipment, and this is the typical home inspection that you normally hear about where you're going to hire an inspector who's going to come in and they're going to check all the appliances, all the equipment, heating, cooling systems, electrical, plumbing, security systems, mechanical components. They're going to check the roof, they're going to check the ceilings, the walls, uh, windows, doors, foundations, swimming pool, all the outlets, um, GFCIs. Make sure everything is in working condition. And basically the key that you're looking for is everything, all the systems and equipment in the property need to be functioning the way they were designed to function. Um, the systems and equipment inspection can be performed by a Florida licensed inspector, a Florida licensed inspection company, or anybody who's a licensed contractor who holds a Florida license to repair and maintain the items being inspected. And that means you can hire, if you want to hire a separate air conditioner inspector or something like that, you, they don't have to be um, a specific inspector. You can hire somebody who maintains and repairs that type of equipment. The second inspection is for radon gas, uh, just to make sure that the radon gas, if um, radon gas has been found in properties in Florida as well as the throughout the United States. And um, there are uh, EPA guidelines, so we, we will conduct a um, radon inspection if you request it, um, just to make sure that any radon, if found, does not exceed those uh, EPA guidelines of 4.0 picocuries per liter of air. Um, the third type of inspection is for lead-based paint. Typically, this is for any properties that were built in 1978 or earlier. Um, and again, EPA certified lead exposure risk assessor would be performing those types of inspections. Uh, termites or other wood destroying organisms, air surface dust, sampling, um, you're checking for toxic and pathogenic molds. And the number six, the sixth type of inspection that you can perform is um, looking for the existence of any open building permits. So this would help us find any um, structures that were built without permits or uh, non-conforming structures or anything like that. Um, and actually in today's world a lot of those types of permits and things are found when the closer or the closing attorney is is doing their estoppels and when they're checking for liens on the property. A lot of times that's when they'll find open permits and things like that. Um, obviously all the inspections shall be non-invasive um, the seller has to provide access to the property, all areas of the property, as well as utilities. The water has to be on, the electricity has to be on to facilitate the inspections. <clears throat> After the inspection, um, the inspector or inspectors, if you have multiple inspectors, are going to compile the detailed list of any items which are not functioning the way they were designed to function. And we just call those items defective items. Um, as well as anything that's outside of the established um, safe or acceptable levels when we're talking about radon and mold and things like that. These are the types of items that may be considered defective items from the inspection and we're going to talk about these a little bit more in detail as we get a little bit farther along because the contract um, is fairly specific. So any systems or equipment that are not in working condition are considered a defect um, if there is a presence of radon gas that's at a level at or above the EPA action levels, which is 4.0 picocuries per liter of air. Um, as far as lead-based paint, 
if there's anything that requires abatement under the HUD or EPA protocols, um, if there's an existence of active infestation by termites or other wood destroying organisms, and or if there's visible damage that's been caused by active or past infestation. Those are also considered defects. The presence of toxic or pathogenic molds within the inside of the dwelling, the way they measure that is they compare the inside of the dwelling to the outside of the dwelling. And um, if there's a, a large enough variance, um, then they, you can determine if there are dangerous toxic or pathogenic molds. So that would be considered a defect under the contract. And also as far as building permits, if there's anything um, any permits that are expired or weren't closed out, um, they were voided for some reason, anything like that, um, again, would be considered a defect. So there's our 15-day inspection period, and then you have the buyer's election period um, basically spans from five days after the expiration of the um, inspection period. And you have that five-day period is set aside for you to determine um, what you want to do at this point. If you found any items that were defective, you can ask the seller to correct those. Um, you can ask them to give you a credit. Instead of correcting them, you have a couple different options, we'll which we'll talk about in more detail. So during the selection period, you're going to notify the seller of any defective items. You're also going to furnish them with a complete copy of the inspection report, which is going to document all of the uh, defective items so they can see um, in more detail. Most of the inspection defects will have photos um, or drawings or you know things like that that go along with it as well so the seller can easily identify exactly what's being considered a defect. And we're going to take that information and we're going to notify the seller and you basically have three options at this point. You can ask the seller to take remedial action at their expense and that means they have to bring any defective items into working order or they need to be replaced. Again, everything has to be um, has to function the way it was designed to function. Your second option is to receive a credit from the seller at closing in lieu of them doing any repairs or replacements or treatments or anything like that. And your third option obviously is a combination of the two. You may have them um, remediate some items and give you a credit at closing for other items. Extremely important right here, um, if you as the buyer do not make an election, then you are shall be deemed to have accepted the property and the systems and equipment in the condition as they existed on the date that you signed the contract, on the effective date. So after you provide the, the um, defective items as well as your elections to the seller. They have 10 days after they receive that to uh, determine what they want to do. They can either agree to your elections, they can refuse your elections, or they can counter offer your elections, just like a, the offer on the property. And then this is where your options come in. If the seller either refuses your elections or if they counter your elections, then you have five days from that period of time to terminate the contract if you want to and get your deposit back. Um, and if you don't do that, if the seller refuses your election um, and you do not elect to terminate the contract, then you have deemed to have accepted the property and the systems and equipment in the condition as they existed on the effective date. So again, let me just run through that really quickly again. If the seller either refuses or counters your elections, you have five days to terminate the contract. If you do not terminate the contract in that time frame, then you are deemed to have accepted the property in the condition that it's in. Um, it doesn't mean the seller has to complete any of the items that you had on the list or anything like that. Um, again, if the if they counter your election, you have the same thing. You have the five-day um, time frame to terminate if they either counter it or if they um, refuse it. Um, another thing that that can happen is if the seller fails to respond during that 10-day period that they have after they receive your elections, then 
the seller shall deem to have refused your buyer's election. So it's just the same as if they would have just flat out refused your election. You have that same five days to terminate the contract. And if you do not terminate the contract, then you're deemed to have accepted the property in the condition as it was on the closing date. Um, community association approval. Sometimes there's remedial action if it's a if it's condominium or townhome or something like that that requires approval of the association to uh, correct an item or to make changes to an item um, or anything like that. If the seller is unable to do that or get the association approval, again you have five days. Um, if they're not able to do it five days prior to the closing date, then you can terminate the contract as well. Uh, what happens if you do not wish to have inspections performed? Um, we always recommend that you perform um, inspections at a very minimum, the systems and equipment inspection. But um, if for some reason you don't want to do that, uh, that's fine. You just accept the property in the condition as it was on the effective date. How do we know if the remedial action has been performed properly? The first thing I recommend is that you have the original inspector who determined that an item was defective. You have that same inspector come out and re-inspect items that were to be mitigated just to make sure that everything is has been completed su uh, successfully and um, that it's functioning the way it was designed to function. So as far as radon gas, the residents on the property if the residence is, um, if the radon, I'm sorry, is reduced to below the EPA action levels, then that's considered to be um, a remediated item as well. Lead-based paint, um, if the lead-based paint or hazards are removed or contained in accordance with the HUD and EPA guidelines, that is considered to have been remediated. Any active infestation of termites or other wood destroying organisms is exterminated or treated and all visible damage caused by the um, any active or past infestation is repaired and replaced. Toxic or pathogenic molds, they're no longer present within the dwelling and the, the levels do not exceed those measured um, when you compare the, the interior to the exterior like we talked about before. Um, written documentation should always be provided from an appropriate government authority. Uh, if there's any open permits or anything like that, you always want to make sure that that's not something that can come back and bite you after the closing day. Um, here's a good question. What happens if the seller is unable to perform and complete all the remedial action prior to the closing date? Sometimes there is maybe a shortage in building materials or a shortage in people that can correct um, a specific appliance or something like that. Um, we've had several things uh, happen in the past where the seller is just not able to get it done for closing. So in that instance what we do is we have to get an estimate on what it's going to cost to repair or replace that item and we just hold 2%, 200% of the estimated cost of completing the remedial remediation um, into an escrow account at closing and the escrow holder will then pay out the amounts to have it remediated or um, if it has been remediated they'll return the funds back to the seller you know whatever the the escrow agreement it says okay here's just a couple really really important items here that I wanted to go through um, cosmetic items in the neighbor contract it talks very specifically about specific items that um, a lot of times buyers will see in a property or an inspector will find and according to the contract they're actually considered to be cosmetic items and the seller is not contractually required to repair these items so these would not be considered defects so let me just run through these very quickly um, a cosmetic condition which is defined as an aesthetic imperfection and does not affect the working condition of the item. It includes corrosion, tears, worn spots, discoloration of floor covering or wallpaper or window treatments, missing or torn screens, nail holes, scratches, dents, chips, 
caulking, um, pitted pool surfaces, minor cracks in windows, driveways, sidewalks, pool and spa decks and garage, uh, tile, lanai and patio floors, and cracked roof tiles, curling or worn shingles, and limited roof tiles so long as there is no evidence of structural damage or leakage. So looking for instance at cracked roof tile. If a cracked roof tile is found it's actually considered a cosmetic item unless you can see any structural damage or leakage which is being caused by that cracked tile. Um, missing and torn screens is a big one for a lot of buyers. Um, they like to see um, screens repaired and things like that um, when they're found and it's the seller is really not contractually obligated to fix those types of things. Missing caulking um, is another big one. Um, cracked windows, you know, little things like that. They're usually we can work with the seller and, and get the seller to repair those items. And a lot of times they're not a really big deal for a seller to do that. Um, but they are not contractually obligated to do that, which is important. And that's why I just wanted to point this out right here. Uh, here's the timeline that we kind of went over. <clears throat> you have the effective date, which is considered day zero, and that's when the inspection period starts. So you count out 15 days from that is when the inspection period ends. And then you have an additional five days for the buyer's election deadline. And then the seller has 10 days from that period to um, respond to your elections. Um, and this is the flowchart that I went I went over, if you haven't seen this flowchart yet, take a look at the beginning of this video. Um, I just did a quick summary and I ran through uh, the flowchart at that point, which just kind of summarizes everything that we went through. So thank you so much for this. If, if you have any questions, you can always um, contact us. We're happy to answer any questions that you have, not only about property inspections, but about any real estate in Southwest Florida questions that you have. Um, and we always walk you through. I'm just gonna end this right here because I already, I think I already have the, the ending to the video from before. Thank you so much for sticking around and listening to this video. If you have any questions about not only home inspections but anything to do with Southwest Florida real estate, we are so easy to get in touch with and we're happy to answer any questions that you may have. You can always text or call Janet Berry at 239-450-1892. You can email her at Janet at JanetBerry.com. Or you can text or call myself, Scott Berry, at 239-450-0290. Or you can send me an email at Scott at JanetBerry.com. Thank you again, and we'll talk to you soon.